Let's talk about what it means to live in the present moment. You know, all the traditions, all the spiritual traditions, talk about living in the moment. And I want to give you some thoughts about what it means to live in the present moment. Number one, think of an airplane with a yoke that the pilot can get a hold of and fly the airplane. And the airplane also has a computer called the autopilot. In this talk, your autopilot is your subconscious mind. Everything you learned from birth to the age of seven, all the principles about your self-worth, self-confidence, sexuality, God, money, how lovable you are, all of that is programming in your subconscious. The moment you take your hand off the yoke, the airplane being your life, when you take your hand off the yoke, the autopilot of subconscious takes over. Meaning, the moment you forget to breathe, follow your breath, the moment you forget to remind yourself to be in this moment, immediately the computer of the subconscious takes over. So imagine a computer with early childhood programming. How lovable I am? Is sex good or bad? Is money good or bad? What is God? Does God notice me or not? Did my parents really love me or not? All of that is in the computer. The moment you leave the present moment, that computer takes over, which means all of your early childhood programming comes into your life. In other words, if a man broke your heart when you were nine and you're not in the present moment, at 39, you will reject the next man because the computer is taking over. Living in the moment. One of the things that happens in the moment, you develop reverence for everything. In other words, you go out there to walk in the prairie and you have respect for the frog, for the weeping willow, for the birds. Reverence means that in a spirit of oneness, you're really respecting everything. You might even be careful not to run over an ant when you're riding your bicycle. Reverence is a state of sheer love with the entire whole. You cannot harm anything. You notice everything and you respect everything. That includes human beings of different races. Another part of that is emotional intelligence. In this talk, the meaning of emotional intelligence is when you're living in the moment, you notice other people's emotions and you notice your own emotion and you also notice what effect you're having on other people's emotions. Like two days ago, I became a bit angry and then I noticed that I was getting angry. So I said to you people, look at me now. I'm not angry. This is what I'm trying to say. In other words, I took anger and brought it slightly over to mindfulness. The energy was still in there, but I brought it over and I spoke to you. I said, look at me now. I might look angry, but I'm trying to tell you something about the class. So it was kind of brought over a little bit to, to a state of mindfulness. Emotional intelligence. Do you know what you're feeling? Do you know what others are feeling? And do you know how your feelings are impacting other people? That's a very simplified definition of emotional intelligence. Other meanings of what it's like to live in the present moment. If I'm looking out at a, at a prairie, there's my eyes, there's the prairie, and there's the act of looking. But it's not that simple. What happens is the mind and its thoughts come between me and the prayer. Unless you're in the present moment and you're looking out on a river, there's the river, there's you, there's the act of looking, but your mind and its thoughts superimpose themselves on the river. If you're worried about your bank loan and you're looking at a river, you're seeing the bank loan in the river. This sounds very abstract, but it's not. Try admiring nature when you're very worried about your daughter's cold. 
then you're not seeing the river. The worry about your daughter is superimposing itself on the river. This is a very powerful rule of yoga. Yoga says anything you've ever experienced in your life has been experienced through your mind. And the difference between heaven and hell is what's in your mind. On a day when you have beautiful thoughts, you're actually experiencing heaven. But in the most beautiful spot in the world, if your mind is going wild, you are experiencing hell. And it's very true. You can try to go to the river and think of your mortgage. And you'll see the mortgage is superimposing itself on the river. It'll happen every time. There is no way, the only way your eyes can make direct contact with the Colorado River is if your mind is completely empty then there's just the river and the gaze. There's no interpretation. So living in the moment means no interpretation. You're out there in the prairie, and it's just the prairie. By the way, you can try this in the arts. If some of you are artists, a lot of times when you write with a busy mind, your ego is superimposing itself on that piece of writing. Other times you have a very empty mind and you're writing, and that second bit of writing is egoless. In other words, you cannot sniff the ego of the author in that piece of poetry. Some poems are like just a mirror reflecting a prairie. Other poems really, they feel like ego. You can feel the author and his personality there. One other comment about what it's like to live in the present, present moment. Every moment has its own needs. Let's say in one day you go to a birthday party, a funeral, and a wedding on the same day. Each one of those occasions has its own needs. A lot of people with busy minds don't recognize that, let's say me and the ten of you, we go through five hours together in a workshop. We don't realize that Every moment that we spend with each other has different needs. Like when we're having lunch with each other, that sitting around the table has its own requirements in terms of behavior, uh, your response to the other people, the vocabulary you use, so forth. If somebody starts to shed tears in the middle of the workshop, then the needs of that moment change. So you cannot be laughing out loud while the other is sobbing. So here's the definition. Living in the moment means you being keenly aware of what the needs of this moment are. Yesterday you noticed I kind of interrogated some of you semi-harshly for the purpose of healing. I was interrogating you about your past. I wanted you to get past your mental conditioning. And at points it got rough. So at that point when it got a little rough, that moment had, had its own needs. The reason I was driving hard into you is because I felt you're pretty close to breaking through mental conditioning. That's why I was driving hard. But the next moment, I realized the needs were different. So I turned to one of you and I said, no, I really do believe that this person is doing their best to heal as soon as possible. So I almost said two different things within five minutes. That's because the needs of the moment was changing. Sometimes you need to be pushed hard, other times you need kindness. Not from me, just from the situation. As we go into the evening, this afternoon, I want you to tune into the needs of the moment. Become sensitive to that. You actually, if you follow your breath right in this bridge between your two nostrils, if five, six times during the day, you get used to following the flow of air between the two nostrils, 
you become a very graceful person because people who follow the flow of the breath become very attuned to what's going on in this moment. Another thing that happens, people who are interested in the present moment, they don't like to place too much attention on their thoughts. Uh, at one point in my life, I went for two years of meditation in Fairfield, Iowa. Before that, I was really interested in my own mind chatter. I thought that my own mind chatter was interesting. After I came out of those two years of training, I went up to Western Canada to climb a mountain. And in the middle of mountain climbing, I had a thought. And I th said to myself, how odd. What is the thought doing here? I'm climbing a mountain. In other words, in two years, my mind had become so quiet that I was surprised that in the middle of trekking, I had a thought. Four years before that, I would have had a thousand of them. So here's what I'm trying to say to you. If you're interested in living in the moment, you're not so interested in energizing random thought. The question is, how do you de-energize random mind chat. Very simple. Wherever your attention goes, that's where your mind goes. In two years of sitting in a meditation center in Iowa, my attention went to spirituality and deep, deep meditation. I became disinterested in my own intellectualization. It's funny because when I came back to New York, some of my intellectual friends said, you're acting dumb. How come you're talking so simple? And what they didn't know is I was no longer interested in mind chatter because New Yorkers can go to an evening party and just chat. And most of them are smart, so they think that their chat is very interesting. But not all of it is. Actually, most of your talking and most of your thinking has nothing to do with the present moment. You have, on the average, 60,000 thoughts per day. This is before you go to sleep. Out of 60,000 thoughts per day, none of them are relevant to managing this moment. That's pretty sad. Imagine how much energy you're consuming. 60,000 thoughts per day. None of them are about managing the present moment. Finally, living in the moment means taking what is there and working with it. So let's imagine you're in a very uncomfortable situation in the dentist's office and you're hearing the whining sound of the drill and somebody's screaming, the one sitting on the chair, and you're next. So you're in that moment. The question is, what do I do with that moment? And this theory says, that moment is the only moment you've got. You're already in the dentist's office. So you're given this situation. Your task is to work with that moment. Like I've taught a lot of my students to go into following the motion of the breath as the drill comes close. And they say that they were actually calm. Or some of them were saying mantras, whatever. Here's the secret. Your mind can only think of one thing at any moment. So if you're following the breath, your mind cannot be on the drill. If it's on the dentist's drill, then it's forgotten to breathe. If you say a mantra, then your mind cannot be simultaneously on a toothache. Your mind can only think one thing in a particular second. People who are in the present moment, they're not so interested in their mind chatter. They have no interest. They're more interested in hearing the frog by the pond. Some people think you've lost your intelligence, but you're actually more alive because you have reverence for the frog, the weeping willow, and your fellow men and women. Yoga treats present moment consciousness as a higher form of intelligence than intellectualization. You go to somebody graduating from the Ivy Leagues and say, the quiet mind is more intelligent 
than the rational mind. And they'll throw you out of Harvard and Cambridge and MIT. But yoga says, no, the non-thinking mind represents a relaxed brain. And a relaxed brain does problem solving much faster than a tired brain. Before I make you tired, I will leave this talk, think about the present moment, and we'll join each other soon.